Welcome to It Takes Two. I'm Blair. And I'm Chris. And today we'll be talking about Real Housewives of Potomac, Season 8, Episode 10. Listen, y'all, I really did try to hate Robin with y'all without merit. I really did. I don't think I could do it this season. I don't think I can meet y'all where y'all at for this season. But subscribe, like, share, comment, all the above. Blair, you ready to walk me through this? I'm ready. Let's go. We start with Karen getting matching tattoos with her daughter, Raven. Okay. Karen also lets us know that she coordinated a dinner with her daughter, Giselle, and her daughter, Grace, Mm -hmm. in order to discuss her college experiences and moving away from home. Listen here, man. Blair has multiple tattoos. I have zero. Blair, we getting matching tattoos in the future? I would love to. What would our matching tattoo be? Something to have to do with our kids if we have kids. Kids? (laughs) (laughs) Probably their initials. (laughs) I'm going to pop my tattoo cherry wasted it on my kid? Okay. Oh, my goodness. Move on. (laughs) Well, Candace and her mom go to brunch. Mm -hmm. Uh, She meets with uh, a lady who's coordinating this Mother's Day event. Some like event planner. Yeah. So, Candace decides to invite everyone except for Giselle. She wasn't coming anyway. Yeah. She has... The lady gives her the invitations and Robin is included in that. But she said she wanted to invite Robin, but she hasn't talked to her yet. Uh, What did you think about this scene so far? Uh, I didn't really have any thoughts about it other than why is Candace trying so hard with Robin? Like, I don't get how Candace doesn't get why Robin's upset. Yeah, I think it was... um I think it was the mom that really stood out to me Mm -hmm. about... They keep asking about Giselle. Now, Now it's almost about... Now it's obsession to me. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? There have been... I don't I don't know if you know this for this episode, y'all. The only time... I think everybody in this episode shot their scene individually. Mm-hmm. Not a lot of them was together as a group. Right. You get what I'm saying? So, Giselle, if anything, probably said a word to Candace. I say zero words to Candace. Mm-hmm. She said at the reunion, she don't want nothing with Candace. She don't want nothing to do with Candace. So, um, I don't think... An invite to Giselle would have did anything because um, Giselle wasn't coming. Right. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But we go see how this Robin thing plays out and down the line in the episode. Keep going. Yeah. Well, Wendy meets with the potential talk show producers. Okay. She had a previous producer, but she had to sever that relationship because the lady wanted 50% ownership of the project oh. that Wendy created. Mm. <laughs> So rightfully so. So Wendy, she um, gives a list of pretty much all the topics she wants to discuss. Um, She says she wants it to feel like you're talking to your cousin. Just a really comfortable conversation. Mm -hmm. And she ends up hiring them on the spot. Hey, listen here. I'm going to put Blair on the spot. How many Wendy episodes you've seen so far? Half of one. Half of one. See, Mm -hmm. this is why you shouldn't do so much planning, Wendy. Just go on. Just because it's on YouTube, right? Yeah, and she's got like six episodes up. Listen, you don't even need all this production. Maybe that lady asked for 50% ownership based on how much she contributed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Maybe she's mm-hmm. like, hey, listen here. If you're going to have me doing all this stuff, mm-hmm. th- this damn near my baby too. Okay. You know what I mean? I say, Wendy, just it, don't, it doesn't take all this. You don't need a production team. You don't need any of that stuff. If people like you, they're going to like you. Set up a camera. Set up a tripod. Talk to the tripod. Talk to the camera. Boom, 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 boom. I'm boom. just saying. Like, I think about Dr. Heavenly's uh, YouTube channel, and she is very entertaining. She gets people I on for go, interviews. I wouldn't go that route. <laughs> I wouldn't. But go. I'm saying, like, she. I've watched more of Dr. Heavenly stuff than than Wendy's, but it's also a different type of content. Yeah. So I'll, I'll leave it alone. So I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm. just set it up. And and the thing about it, or main reason why I say just go that route, don't worry about all this production stuff, is because you got to pay those people. Mm. You get what I'm saying? And I always believe in paying yourself first yeah, before paying somebody else. So that's just my little advice, you know? Mm-hmm. Continue. Well, NECA goes furniture shopping with her sister. Okay. And we find out that her sister has three kids. She's married and she's a doctor. Nice. NECA says that she's technically lollygagging because she uh, hasn't had a baby yet, but she said she's still trying. Mm-hmm. They talk about their father and how he grew up with nothing. He came to this country as a taxi driver mm-hmm. and he in- eventually worked his way up to being a doctor. Hey, listen mm-hmm. here, uh, NECA, this season's a does for you. Um, maybe uh, you could do better next season. Mm-hmm. This would have been uh, better to know uh, uh, earlier. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? <laughs> Before all the windy stuff. Uh, we, me and Blair, we did a review on the Essence article about, and they touched on the whole uh, rift between Wendy 
and and NECA and things like that. Check that out. I'll put that in the link below. But um, it's good to learn something about her finally yeah. on episode a thousand now. You mm-hmm. get what I'm saying? But besides, like you come in hide and things like that and beefing, it, it's good to know something. Now I know your father used to be a taxi driver and your sister has children. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. Continue. Well, Karen, Giselle, and their daughters meet up for brunch. Yeah, Karen. Uh, tells us a little backstory that she met Giselle through Jack and Jill back in the day. Mm -hmm. And there was this cookie competition that Giselle lost that she says was rigged because Karen wanted her family member to win. Okay. So Grace tells us a little bit that she's a homebody and she is a bit nervous to leave. And Giselle said that Grace has been kind of tearful about leaving her friends Mm -hmm. and her house and all this type of stuff. And Raven tells her that you don't have to have it all figured out. Just have the courage to go. Raven even said that she was really um, tearful and crying when she was leaving. But when she got uh, to where she was going, I think she lives in New York, Mm -hmm. um, that she just ended up being okay, And she figured she could be herself and just start a whole new life. Listen here, man. You ain't gonna think about them friends once you get on campus. No, you're gonna have a whole. <laughs> you gonna have a whole new, new batch list. of friends mm-hmm. and people and activities. Like you're gonna be like filled to the brim with stuff. You're not even gonna be worried. Yeah, about you ain't it. gonna be worried about them people. Mm-hmm. But I will say this though. Explain to me. Maybe give me a, a history lesson on the Real Housewives of Potomac, Blair. Mm-hmm. Basically. Is Karen sitting down with Giselle uh, groundbreaking? And when I say groundbreaking, I mean in the sense of I thought they hated each other. I thought they didn't like each other at one point. Um, Their relationship has had a lot of ups and downs. Okay. So, I mean, they knew each other before the show. And once they got on the show, Giselle kind of came at Karen sideways about like their tax issues, mm-hmm. things with her husband and things like that. And um, they I feel like they have like a frenemy relationship. Mm. Like, I think they enjoy the sparring that they get to do with each other Mm. and they have some type of level of respect. But they able to still sit down with each other, things like that, even through the low blows they may have thrown at each other. Yeah. Keep that in mind, because I'm going to refer back to that later on in the episode. You ready? I'm ready. Let's keep going. Next, Rob and Juan and their kids go to this place called Go Stretch. Mm -hmm. And Robin says, you know, her kids are athletes, so they want to make sure that they're stretched out. And, you know, one of the kids had a lot of injuries. Mm -hmm. So Robin receives a text message inviting her to the Mother's Day event. Yeah. Robin says that Candace is confused and doesn't know why they are where they are. Mm -hmm. She wants to have a sit down with Candace and make it clear to her that she doesn't want anything from her. She doesn't need an apology, but just a second record straight as far as where they are. Yeah. Robin and Juan, it's their turn to get stretched out. Mm-hmm. Robin's over there talking about spending more time together and all this type of stuff. And Juan ended up falling asleep. <laughs> Listen here, I do I do the same thing, Juan. Listen <laughs> here, man. This is this this let me know something. This is the season of what, Blair? Juan and Robin. Say it with me. This is the season of who? Juan and Robin. I thought I was saying it with you. No, no, no. I'm I am <laughs> I am the teacher, and you, like, repeat after me. Okay. This is the season of who? Juan and Robin. Juan, you don't have a job right now. Let's just let's just play scenario. Okay. Do you have, have you ever played that game? Scenario, what's the scenario? Guess the scenario. Something okay. like that. Scenario game. Right? You don't have a job right now. Mm-hmm. Technically, you do, though. Mm-hmm. You have shoot days. Mm-hmm. Days where you have to show up and shoot for Real Housewives of Potomac. Mm-hmm. Would it make sense, even though Robin is the one that has, you know, is the uh, the main character, would it make sense to seem interesting for the camera, to seem productive for the camera, so that, you know, you can stay on the show and things like that? So, like, how come you don't see this as a check? Yeah. Because you're not getting paid to coach no more. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? So why not have interesting conversations? Mm-hmm. Be intentional in your scenes. Be... Um, uh, there in your scene, be present in your scenes. Besides making it seem like we're forcing you to shoot, this is this is the only job you have now. You know so, what I think it is. What do you think it is? I don't think he likes Robin. Okay. okay. I think that makes it hard for him to sit up and have these conversations because. But I'm Team Robin over here. I understand that, but I'm telling you. As present and as capable as he could be to hold a conversation and to be decent and all this type of stuff, I think he really is annoyed by Robin and her conversation. I don't she, think he has it in him. Even, she didn't even say nothing bad or anything. She said, I want to spend more time. Oh, oh my, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but my thing is... <laughs> That's hey, how Juan feels. But my thing is, Juan, 
you have to view this as, especially since you like, you are right up the road, man. You have to view this as a hustler. You have to be like, I ain't got no job right now. So at least what one thing I'm going to do is these other housewives ain't talking about nothing. They born and things like that. I'm going to make sure whenever Robin's shooting or talking to me on the phone and things like that, there's something to take from it. Okay. Besides negativity of falling asleep, giving one word answers. Oh, I don't know. You know what I mean? I mm-hmm. put my credit card down. Snoring on the table and things like that. Maybe it, So what you don't like, Robin? You like money. You like your house, don't you? Mm-hmm. You like paying for things and having things paid on time. I say, hey, listen, man. This is your job right now. Robin's bringing home the money. Help her increase it. Because if you're interesting and things like that and people want to see you, then you can be like, hey, when it's time to negotiate for a bigger contract, you can help Robin get a bigger contract. But like you said, maybe it is as simple as he don't like her. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't know, man. If I if I didn't have a job and let's say you was on this show, oh my goodness, your scenes go be legendary. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm telling you this right now. One thing that one thing and two things for certain, we both ain't getting fired. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm gonna make sure you go keep your job, okay? All right. Continue. Well, Ashley is um, at her house with her mom, yeah. and they're getting ready for this Mother's Day event. Yeah. She is just saying that she's thankful to be a mother. She's yeah. thankful that she can celebrate her mom, mm-hmm. and she's really in good spirits. Okay, let's go. So we are at the Mother's Day event, and uh, Mia's mom couldn't make it, but Mia still shows up. Yeah. Uh, the rest of the ladies arrive, including Sharice and her daughter. Wendy couldn't make it because she had some book signing event. Yeah. And Candace thinks that NECA being there might be the reason why Wendy decided not to come. Hey, listen here. If NECA ain't the reason, she's definitely, uh, 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 that's definitely an add on. Yeah. It's a I, factor. Mm-hmm. I actually w- was thinking like Wendy wouldn't come if NECA's there because mm-hmm. Wendy not going to come along. She's going to bring her mama. Yeah. And then NECA's going to try to call her mom out. And then this is going to be part 35 of this whole thing that we don't care about. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So maybe it's good that Wendy wasn't there. Yeah. Sharice talks to Mia. Well, first Mia is asking Sharice, how are things with you and Karen? Yeah. And she's like, we don't get along. Oh, and okay. I can't make nobody like me. Okay. And then she turns the conversation to say, well, you know, I saw Jacqueline the other day. Mm-hmm. And Jacqueline, you know, was crying. She was upset, you know, when it came to us talking about you. Mm -hmm. She even, um, NECA even was there and she even spoke really negatively about you. Mm, That's, that's crazy. So, so, so her name is, her name is Sharice. Yeah. Sharice, how come Karen don't like her? Because Sharice goes out of her way to pull Karen's dirty laundry because they've known each other for so long. Oh, okay. So she'll come on the show talking about, well, I know you did this and I know you've cheated on Ray and you've done, you know, all this type of stuff. Whether it's true or not, Karen, um, like, Wait a minute Karen is just like, okay, you're coming f- coming at me for no reason, pretty much. Mm, and and. And what does Karen call her marriage? Does she call it a what? Institution. An institution. She's coming for my institution, yes. basically. Oh, okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Continue. Mia tells us that she hasn't had time to talk to Jacqueline since mm-hmm. they got back from Mexico. Mm-hmm. NECA says that Jacqueline spoke for two hours about everything she knows about Mia, and it was a lot. Is there anything that, that came from that scene that you picked up? Not really. Okay. Mm-mm. I mean, we'll... I don't see why Jacqueline would talk to NECA about Mia um and I feel like I don't know I I don't trust Mia I I don't know I feel like Jacqueline's kind of trying to get on the show again Mm. because I'm just like you're hanging around Sharice and and then you over here sparking a two-hour conversation with NECA like are you really that friendly or is it because these women are on the show that you want to lay out your heart I have no idea so it's just a big question mark let's keep going Well, Sharice asked Ashley about her love life Mm -hmm. and she doesn't want to be with Michael romantically, Mm -hmm. but she's not ready to sign the papers. Why? She says she'll do it when she get good and ready. No, you was you would sign it when (laughs) Michael get good and ready. What do you feel about that whole that whole debacle of Ashley and her love life? Ashley still wants the access to the money. Mm -hmm. Okay, Uh, she doesn't want to let go of the lifestyle that she has. And I think when the divorce papers get signed, some things might change for her. Or maybe she's afraid some things might change for her because she didn't sign a prenup to where she would actually um, maintain the lifestyle that she has today. So mm. I think that's pretty much what it is. She's just dragging her feet. Here's the thing. I think she's fearing the worst when it probably won't even be that bad. Maybe a judge would give her alimony. I don't know how long her and Michael was married. Probably not that long. But my whole point is, Ashley, 
she better for for someone who is basically dependent on another person to basically finance their lifestyle mm-hmm. i would think ashley would have a more interesting storyline or at least be at least more interesting okay you get what i'm saying because i'm like hey listen as so far only thing i know is that you can pay from this mm-hmm. and i'm actually like hey I don't really know anything about Ashley unless it's attached to Michael. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Even when she was shooting the scene with her mom and things like that, I'm, I'm like, okay, like, okay, it's good to see your mom. But other than that, Ashley is just basically, it seemed like a ticking time bomb whenever it comes to whenever that divorce paper signs. Mm-hmm. It seemed like we don't want to know nothing else about Ashley mm-hmm. unless she talks about Michael in this divorce. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And eventually, I think it will happen. I think Michael will get tired of paying for things. And he will, you know, because men like power. Mm-hmm. So even so right now, he has the power. He's playing nice. But that day will come where we go see TMZ headline, mm. Ashley going broke or uh-huh. something like that. Because Michael decided to move on completely. Yeah. You know? I hope not, but let's go. Yeah, well, Karen is talking to one of the ladies yeah. and talking about how her perfume has been in Bloomingdale's for five years. Okay. And uh, NECA asks if Wendy is coming to the event. Why? Candace says no. Mm. <laughs> and then we also learned that Robin responded to Candace mm-hmm. and said that she didn't think it would be helpful for them to be around the group with their unresolved issues. Listen, I love it. When especially being married and seeing the behind the scenes, I love seeing a response in in real person compared mm-hmm. to the response that Robin gave on the text. <laughs> <laughs> you get what I say the one that she gave. You on get the, the raw and the real oh, in the yeah. house. Yeah, I, I ain't nothing going. That, that that that's probably what Robin said behind the scenes. But uh-huh. you know, she probably just you know a lot of typing, a lot of backspacing, a lot of typing, a lot of backspacing. Neka, I understand you was looking for your scene. Mm-hmm. You know. She basically was like, "Is my shooting partner coming today?" <laughs> no, dang, I don't. I don't think I'm gonna get renewed next season because it's kind of it, it is strange to ask if your nemesis is coming. Unless, yeah, just enjoy the day. Unless, but she can't though. Just enjoy the day because she's not sharing her life. Mm-hmm. And guess what? To keep a life on these type of shows, you need scenes. Mm. You need things that make people want to keep looking at you and unless you told me NECA unless I actually seen NECA on the screen and things like that I ain't know NECA was there mm. you know what I'm saying there's nothing about her that stands out so far this season yeah you know yeah let's go well Candace has a lady put the ladies put down their forks and knives come mm. into the building so mm-hmm. they can watch her sing oh so. boy <laughs> so she gives her a little ha ha one two mm-hmm. and not to like make fun of because candace i think she's a great singer um but she does her thing and uh then the event is over yeah she, i think she sung a song you're gonna win yeah I, I understand that and um my thing is singing is always uncomfortable when it's in the wrong setting if or when it's surprised on you when it's like if i'm <laughs> eating and things like that and we gotta stand and look at you to sing I'm like, I didn't come to no concert. I didn't come to no uh, uh, party. I thought this was a Mother's Day brunch and things like that. But sure. Yeah. Give us a do do do. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And then we can move on. You yeah. Uh oh. Are we there yet? We're at the scene of the night. Are we at the scene of the show? Yes. Oh my gosh. Where Robin and Candace meet up. Take me slow. So Candace in the confessional, she's telling us that she believes she just stated her opinion on social media like the rest of the world. Okay. She tells Robin that she's there to listen. Okay. And Robin explains to her that a friend who goes to the media, spreads lies, Mm -hmm. trashes uh, for a personal decision that had nothing to do with you. That's what you've done. Yeah. Candace says that she didn't say what she said to be offensive. Okay. Robin wants to know, well, what did you expect would come of that? If you Mm. weren't trying to be offensive, what were you trying to do? Mm -hmm. Candace believes that it's unfair to have this issue and to not let me know you were offended. Mm -hmm. Robin says that she's not throwing her husband under the bus for entertainment. Mm -hmm. And Candace says that we're on a show about our lives. Mm. Robin explains to her there's a thin line between what we decide to share and what we decide not to share about Mm -hmm. our partners. Mm -hmm. 
Her biggest issue is Candace spreading the narrative that they plotted on Chris. Mm. Candace says that it was unlike Robin to go against Giselle and come to Chris's defense. She feels that birds of a feather flock together Mm -hmm. and she doesn't understand how Robin could be friends with somebody like Giselle. Mm. And Robin tells her, look, if you think I'm plotting on your husband, then you shouldn't want to be my friend anyway. Ladies first, I'll let you go first in all of this. Uh, Pretty much. Candace, yes, you went online and voiced your opinion like everybody else, but you claim to be this lady's friend. Mm. How can you be this lady's friend and talk all this trash? Mm. Now, I do want to put the spin on it that, okay, Robin, she did bring out like a speaker like last season to blast uh, Candace and things that she said about the group and all this type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And that would have been Candace's opportunity to say, oh, Robin's not my friend because a friend wouldn't do this. Mm -mm. But for some reason, (laughs) Candace is willing to take the abuse and the mistreatment Mm -hmm. and still consider Robin a friend. But Robin says... I'm not willing to. Mm. I'm not willing to. And I don't fault Robin for that. You decide what you accept in your friendships. Mm -hmm. And if Candace is willing to accept being blasted in front of a group of people by someone you consider a friend, that's your business. Mm -hmm. But Robin is not going to accept you talking trash about her and thinking we all cool. And I think that's where Candace gets messed up. She really thinks that, oh, we're friends. We're going back and forth. We're able to say whatever. But no, that's not the case. Mm. That's not the case. Um, And do I feel like Robin and Giselle and them plotted against Chris? I don't know. Mm. I don't put it past them. Okay. But at the end of the day, Candace has no proof of that. So for you to sit up here and accuse this lady in her face about it, then yeah, the question comes, why do you want to be friends with somebody like that? Mm Mm-hmm. It is very odd, and it's just like I can't understand for the life of me why Candace would want to be friends with somebody um, to the point that Robin has treated her the way that she has. Yeah. And she's mad and upset with Robin for not just forgiving her. It, it doesn't make any sense. I just think it's irrational. Mm. I think it's all pure emotion, anger and rage towards Giselle that got spilled onto Robin. And like she's saying, I don't know how you can be friends with somebody like Giselle. Why does that matter to you? Mm-mm. why does that matter to you wendy's friends with uh what's her name ashley and ashley has done and said some of the craziest things but you don't care that wendy's friends with ashley you invited ashley to the brunch mm. so yeah but what do you how do you feel? i think she had for you ain't gonna go that far you uh she had dinner on lunch with necker uh-huh okay when i first started to do this show with my wife um it was uh, decided for me that We don't like Robin this season because of what she did last season. Basically, the anti-Robin club. So, I came into this season following my rules for Real Housewives of Potomac, you know, because I'm new to this. I'm not true to this. I came in, and y'all gave me my syllabus. Y'all gave me my rules, and the rules was, number one, you hate Giselle. I said, okay, I hate Giselle. Okay, (laughs) you know what I mean? Rule number two, you hate Ashley. I'll say, okay, I hate Ashley. Okay, I want to join this club with y'all. Rule number three, you got to hate Robin. Okay, I hate Robin. Okay, cool. I think they I think they even had a name called the Green Green Eye Bandits or something like that. I didn't know nothing about it until this season. I'm just trying to join the club with y'all. I sit back and watch this season, and it's almost impossible for me to hate Robin. Mm -hmm. I am Team Robin all the way. I like her whole demeanor. I like how even killed she stays. And I understand. I watched last season, the season before, and I seen the speaker and all these things. And y'all can bring up all these other things that she may have done that, quote unquote, uh, brung attention or basically call somebody to the carpet. But that is to me, I call that uh, reality TV type of things. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? It, It happened within the confines of the show. It was basically content for the show. What Candace did to Robin is out of the confines of the show. You get what I'm saying? And she's trying to uh, rely on the fact that, hey, everybody else was saying it. Well, as Blair said, everybody else ain't friends with Robin. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, you keep telling me or basically alluding that they colluded against you when all I keep seeing is flashback scenes of Robin disagreeing with Giselle. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, I'm like, what is going on here? Like, all I've seen, I've seen her tell Giselle, like, hey, I don't think that's right. I don't think that's what happened. I don't agree with that. And then I've seen another scene where Robin is talking to Candace and Chris 
basically saying I'm on your side and things like that. Now, unless you telling me that this woman is a liar and things like that, and she's basically just playing coy in your face, but basically stabbing you behind your back. Cool. If that's the case, why you want to be friends with her? Let's mm-hmm. not be dense today, Candace. Come mm-hmm. on now. Come on. Is as Blair stated, is your rage for Giselle? Is this a Giselle thing to where you're basically like, I want everybody away from Giselle? See, I watched what happens uh live and things like that. I think that's what it's called, right? Yeah. Watch what happened lives or something like that. Mm-hmm. I watched that Andy Post show and things like that. And I saw her response on there. She did not talk about the tweets because she's saving that for the reunion. Mm-hmm. But she told Andy, Hey, I need a whole segment to talk about what happened on the show. I'm gonna air out Giselle all dirty laundry and things like that. Giselle didn't say a word to you. So what are you gonna talk about this thing with Giselle? Right. There's there's nothing in this season that Giselle did to you that you need a whole segment on to basically get your thing on. You see, Candace, you are a victim of Twitter. You are a victim of basically all these people who basically putting a battery in your back and basically telling you, hey, get at them, get at mm-hmm. them, get at them, get at them. And then when you get at them and there's actually real repercussions because you know these people, you're like, I didn't say nothing to what those other people said. Well, I don't know those other people. Yeah. And Robin, her whole demeanor is she don't want to be friends with you. Mm-hmm. And it hurts her. That's why she got up and walked away so fast because she was about to boo-hoo cry. Mm-hmm. I don't know what this relationship or this tethered thing you have to Robin and things like that, but this whole idea, she even talked about it a little bit on the Watch What Happened Live. She was talking about it a little bit. She said like this relationship that she had with Robin, she was really hurt by uh, it not being able to reconcile. She said not so much now because I think she's now going to basically be like, hey, listen here, when I taught Giselle, Anybody who's close to her go get it too. No, Candace, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. You're not going to be on the show no more. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that right now. Mm-hmm. Ashley's not on your side, but yet you want to still tether yourself to Ashley and things like that. Karen is in the middle. She's like, this season, I like this season. I like Giselle, so I don't really feel what you feel. You see, Blair said something in a review uh, episode that we did talking about Candace tweets. She basically said, Candace don't know how to fall on her sword. Candace, don't you, know how to let other people don't let other people fall on the sword. Don't mm-hmm. let me quote you wrong because yeah. I ain't trying to let you sue me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> she don't know how to let other people fall on their sword. Right. The sword was ready. Mm-hmm. Giselle was falling and falling and falling, and you just pushed her. And everybody's like, Dag, why are you pushed her? <laughs> <laughs> she was already falling. Uh-huh. You get what I'm saying? So my thing is, Candace, I think what you're seeing in real time. Those same people on social media that put batteries in your back and things like that, like get at them, get at them. They they they're using it as a puppet. Mm-hmm. And eventually, all I see right now on social media is everybody turning on you now. Mm-hmm. Everybody is saying, "What the hell is this, Candace?" Mm-hmm. Those same people that was cheering for you that love it when you go at them, go at them. Yes, 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 go at them. The same people that wouldn't even have the heart to say half the things that you say to someone you don't like. They don't, they don't talk like you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? They let you talk like you, mm-hmm. right? Trust me, they are turning against you now because they don't understand. This is supposed to be the season of, I'm testing oh, you. Robin and Juan. Robin and Juan. Mm-hmm. We supposed to hate Ron, hate Juan and Robin for stealing and taking from us the season that they hid from us and things like that. This is going to be the season that we put them on the carpet. But now everybody's defending. You're making us defend Robin. Mm-hmm. you making us go like, yo, why you want to be friends with Robin? Yeah. We are on Robin's side on this whole thing. Like, yo, how many times Robin got to say, I don't want to be friends with you? Mm-hmm. She played, she put it out plain and simple. She said, you call me a fraud. You call me all these things, all these insults and things like that. And it just shows that, A, I don't want to be friends with you. So I don't know what Candace want. Do you know what Candace want? Do you think all of this bled before we get up out of here is all about Giselle and, yeah. not, and not so much about their relationship? Yeah, I think it's all about Giselle. People's, um, I guess loyalties to to Giselle Mm -hmm. and their complacency when it comes to Giselle's behavior. Mm -hmm. I think it's all of that. And I think Candace wants everyone to turn against to turn against Giselle because she's such this terrible person. It's not gonna happen. But that's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. You gotta know Mm -hmm. how to play the game. And the thing about it is everybody just gonna turn against you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Anything else you want to share on this whole Robin and Candace breakup that Candace is having a hard time accepting? One thing that she did say in the Watch What Happened Live with Andy, the re, uh, she says something across the lines of a paraphrasing that um, the main reason why uh, Robin is friends with Giselle 
it's so it's so Robin don't have to think. She think like Giselle is playing puppet master with Giselle and things like that. Playing puppet master with Robin. Mm-hmm. Oh, I mean, yeah, playing puppet um, master with Robin rather. Mm-hmm. But the social media is playing puppet master with you. Yeah. Because how even today it was things like that. She's still retweeting and tweeting things out when Ashley called her out on the carpet. She said, "Hey, listen, you like to." Go on social media and see a lot of things, but in person, you ain't that big, you ain't that bold, you ain't that bad, you ain't yeah. bad. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I feel like with Candace, like I feel like a lot of what she tweets when it comes to how she feels about the cast, the mm-hmm. show, the the storylines is absolutely true and accurate. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, it was definitely messed up for Robin to hold back her storyline, and you and your husband were under fire for something that wasn't even true. That was absolutely trash. And that's not nothing to um, to backtrack on. Mm-hmm. But I'm just confused as to why Candace can't stand in her ish and when that- it comes to what she said. Mm-hmm. It's like instead of her saying, Robin, I tweeted this and I said this because this is how I felt. Mm-hmm. And I meant what I said. And the chips will fall where they may because I was being honest. Mm-hmm. But she can't say that. She says everybody was saying it. Mm-hmm. Everybody was doing it. Yeah, sure. Why are you mad at me? And guess what? <laughs> guess what? That line, that line didn't work. That line didn't work for me when I was a kid. My mother still hit me across the back with a belt, and y'all can't do nothing about it. She's dead. Okay. So I would respect Candace a lot more in this instance. Not that she fiending for my respect, mm-hmm. but if she was to just say, Robin. This is the this is the facts of the situation. This is how I felt, and if you don't want to be my friend anymore because of it, that's your right. Yeah. But except she's like crawling up underneath her butt, trying to get her to forgive yeah. her. It's and, just strange. And, and here's what I don't get, and then I should get out of here. Okay. Is maybe I I'm not gonna say I don't respect her going at them for her husband. Um, but I just it, want her to stand in it. No, it, to mm-hmm. me, it's not that I don't respect her going at them for her husband my whole thing is no one agreed with giselle yeah it's, it's one thing if she really fooled all of us mm-hmm. and then we always like oh shoot we really should have believed chris mm-hmm. like we we was all on it's kind of like who like what are you defending if we all on your side and even production they were showing all the clips and the videos of chris not talking to nobody yeah. him not touching nobody so even production in the show was on your was side on your side because they definitely show uh flashback clips when you go against your word mm-hmm. so i'm like it's one thing if you're like hey listen i am going against them because they tricked everybody and made everybody think that my husband was one way when he wasn't I'm like, we wasn't deceived. Right. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So maybe I don't take it seriously mm-hmm. because it's 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 as if like we caught Giselle in a lie. Mm-hmm. It's like the worst person that could have came up with that story did because we wasn't going to believe Giselle because I got my syllabus. Don't like Giselle. I'm like, okay, I, I don't like Giselle. Mm-hmm. So it's like we wasn't really riding with Giselle on this story. Yeah. So I don't know why she's riding so hard against Giselle. When we, I don't really see the ramifications of this whole lie. And my thing is like, yes, ride hard against Giselle, but you've made your point. Mm. Is she beating a dead horse, basically? <laughs> Absolutely. Because like you said, what more is there to say at the reunion other than stuff from last uh, season? What? And I told I told you this privately, and, and, and you disagree with me, but we going to see. Mm. I said, I don't think Giselle going to let her get it off. Mm. I think Giselle is going to antagonize her with her silence. Right? Yeah, that's what she always does. I know, but I think yeah. she, I think like, I think, especially since Candace said she need a whole segment to get some off, I think Giselle just gonna walk off the stage. Yeah. She just gonna be like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even gonna give you that. I'm not even gonna give you the, the opportunity to even talk about me to me. Yeah. I'm gonna walk off the stage and I'm not gonna shoot with you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? When you wanna get your little segment off of, of airing me out and calling me all these other things, I will not be on the stage. I will be in the back. Um, you get what I'm saying? That's what I think is going to happen okay. because she is living rent free in this woman's head. It's mm-hmm. craziness. Anything else? That's all I got, man. Make sure y'all subscribe, like, comment, all the above. Check out those reviews that we did on Candace tweets and also on that Essence article about uh, Nika and Wendy and basically the whole heritage culture that they have with this whole. You know how they had a little beef with the shrine and things like that. Yeah, y'all be good. Bye.